us have been through so many serious things in our lives where we've uh, where there's been loss and pain uh, I still remember like yesterday when my brother passed away and it's been over 10 years now 11 years ago 12 years ago that's right 12 years ago and so when you go through uh, loss at that level you kind of do everything in your power to try to avoid it or stay away from it uh, but it is incredible how God uses the crisis moments he uses the crisis moments to reveal something about himself that we never would have seen if he hadn't allowed it so this will sound kind of strange but do you know that I believe that the enemy of our soul is the one that kind of pushes us to try to avoid crises so we do everything in our power to try to stay comfortable to try to keep life predictable <laughs> because we don't like coming to the crisis moments and there's real reason for not wanting to come to it because it's painful if you've lost a mom or a dad or husband or wife or brother or sister somebody very close then you really do from that point on you kind of do everything you can to stay away from pain and loss at that level because you don't ever want to hurt that way again you know it's funny because uh, I think when there's a childbirth which I understand is the absolute worst kind of physical pain you that you could feel but right after birth there is a uh, there's a hormone, uh, no, a, a chemical that's released in the woman, uh, oxytocin. And one of the things it does, not only does it help her bond with the baby, but it causes her to forget how painful <laughs> the birth was. <laughs> so it causes the joy and the bonding in the birth to cause you, cause her to forget the real intensity of the pain. It's not that it ever leaves you, but but the real issue, the real pain is erased from her memory while she's bonding and enjoying this moment. And so it's sort of like what God does in our lives. When something new is birthed in our lives, it's painful to go through the process for this new thing to be birthed. But in the joy of the revelation, in the joy of this new life, he causes us to forget the pain. Isn't he a marvelous God? Even when Joseph, we know the story of Joseph, how he, his brothers betrayed him and, uh, and he got lied on and betrayed and once even after he got in Egypt was in, you know, he was uh, Potiphar who was the, um, the position that he held was not only a high position in the military, but he also oversaw all of the prisons in Egypt. And so his wife lied on him, uh, lied on Joseph. And so Potiphar, who could have had Joseph killed for that, actually just put him in prison since he oversaw the prisons. And uh, then even when Joseph got in prison, he had a chance to kind of get released. One guy, you know, if you know the story, I won't go all into it, but Joseph was then forgotten, the person who could have done him a favor and got him out early forgot about him so he gets forsaken he gets betrayed and then he gets forgotten <laughs> and then even after God does deliver him I won't go through the whole story and Joseph finds himself ended up being second in command in Egypt as a prime minister and uh, and his brothers who actually betrayed him uh, he meets up with them again. They're coming to Egypt looking for food. And and he ends up, you know, he kind of tricks them, plays around with them for a little while before he finally reveals himself as to who he really is. But then he makes this awesome statement to his brothers. You meant it for evil. But God, he meant it for good. There's some horrible things that have happened to you and me. But you've got to receive God's perspective. 
He meant it for good, even if the people who did it against you meant it for evil. God, God, the one who holds the whole universe together, the one who knows the hearts and the souls and the lives of every single person on the planet, his word says he meant it for good. God allowed it for my good. And so, so entrenched was that revelation to Joseph that even after he later got married and had children, he named his children according to what had been revealed to him. He named one of his children, God has caused me to forget. <laughs> so even though it was painful for that revelation to come into my life, but what God showed me, what God did in me, caused me to forget. Then he named another child. God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my suffering. <laughs> God made me fruitful. I didn't want to be here. I, how many of you have said this? I didn't ask for this. <laughs> how many times have you said that? I didn't ask for this. I just wanted to be saved. I just wanted to be right. I just wanted to go to heaven. <laughs> but I didn't ask for all this persecution. I didn't ask for all this family trouble. I didn't ask for all this chaos on my job. I didn't ask for all this betrayal and misunderstanding. I wasn't trying to make no name for myself when folks was going off on me and saying who you think you are. I didn't think I was nobody. I was just trying to do what God said do with my life. But God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my suffering. So will you receive his word today? Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. I can look back over it now and now I can say I thank you. And even for what you're in the midst of, even for what I'm in the middle of right now, can you just give him that sacrifice? Lord, I thank you. I don't know how all of this is going to turn out, but I got a track record with you now. Yes, Lord God, I know you're going to make it turn out for my good. I know that I'm going to be fruitful. Yes, Lord, I'm going to bear fruit in the midst of the suffering. Thank you, Lord God. Yes, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I hear the Lord saying this to say this to you guys, especially to all of the mothers in the room and your children. Your children and your grandchildren are going to, going to reap the benefit of the fruit. Yes, Lord God. Yes, they are. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. The generational curses and the things that have always gone down from one generation to another in your family. It stops. Yes, Lord God, it stops with me. It stops. It stops with me. Thank you, Lord. It stops. It stops in my generation. Thank you, Lord God. And even where you see your children moving in certain ways and they're about to make certain decisions and moving in certain direction, you hold on to the Lord's word and just know he's got a path for them, just like he had one for you. <laughs> Don't you know that you and I, we used to worry our parents. <laughs> we probably scared our parents, too, with some of the things that we was going into and doing. We worried them and they prayed. Even if your parents, some of you, if your parents wasn't even saved, they still, that probably is the only time they did pray. <laughs> when they saw some of the decisions that we made and the direction that we was going. So don't you worry about your children and your grandchildren. God's got, my we used to hear Bishop Joseph Garland, he said, God's got a fix to fix you. <laughs> so even if you don't understand why they're moving in that direction, it's because God's got a fix to fix them. You say, sometimes we'll say, well, God, it didn't take all that for me to seem like get myself together. That's because we done forgot. See, that, what I said, see, that, that revelation came to you. Now you done forgot. The, 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 
that pain of that birth and that process that you went to to get you to where you are. That oxytocin then came in, that spiritual oxytocin that made you forget because we bonded with God and great revelation. And I forgot what I went through and what, what really happened to get me to this level of faith in God. And now that we watch our children start going through the process, we're like, what is wrong with my child? It don't seem like it took me that long to get a hold of God and to really grab the Oh, yes, it did. We just didn't forgot because we're walking with him now. We're running with him now. So even as you're watching your children, don't be afraid of the enemy. I hear the Lord saying, don't be afraid of death and what the enemy can do. That's why God started us off with this word today to be still and know that he's God. The same way he moved heaven and earth to get a hold of our heart, he's going to do it with your grandchildren and with your daughters and sons. Yes, he will, because he's a faithful God. Come on, just acknowledge his faithfulness right now. Lord, I thank you. You're faithful.